Has it ever occurred to you that despite all these workplace certifications that we have out there, great place to work, best place to work, happiest office, happy employees, best office, healthiest workplace that I have seen, or healthy place to work at, and all those engagement surveys, hundreds, if not thousands that are available out there, plus the billions of dollars that have been um, implemented and invested in employee engagement and happiness and well-being and all that, yet the workforce is still unhappy. So what's happening? What is happening when your data is showing that, yeah, you have an 80% engagement score, yet you have a high turnover and a very dissatisfied workforce. Let's talk about that today because I want to tell you what's going on in the world of work so you understand why you are having as an employee a not so great experience because you see that behind the scenes, right? Um, and also for you HR people and um, business leaders, what is really happening? And if we all just stopped for two seconds to think, and see through the chaos, what, what we put ourselves into, it could be solved in months because it's not that difficult. Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist. And as you know, I talk about everything and anything related to HR and human experiences. I like to call myself or describe myself like that. I like to talk about and look at and study human experiences because once you do that, you can fix everything around them. You remember we talked about in previous videos, mental health is environmental, it's not mental. So when we are talking about anything related to employees, retention rate, motivation, mental health, well-being, and all the, the buzzwords that you hear outside uh, um, in the workplace, it always goes back to the system in which they operate. And that's what I like to look at. So as you know, cup of tea, because there is no conversation without a cup of tea. Somebody asked me the other day, am I drinking wine? No, <laughs> I don't really drink alcohol. But today, let's talk about that. Sorry for my hair. I just was in, at the pool. But because I really want to give you this, so you as an employee understand what's happening. HR is struggling, and I would like to start with that and speak to also business leaders that they are not giving HR the help that would help them or the tools that would help them to create better workplaces for employees. And it's really not that difficult. So. Let's start with some few questions that I like to ask HR professionals and business leaders. And the first one is, what happens when your workplace certification no longer attracts talent, build your brand or help HR? What happens when your engagement survey score is good, yet you have a high turnover or dissatisfied workforce? Well, I'll tell you what happens. You are measuring the wrong thing. You are measuring something that is not important to employees. You are measuring something that is important to you, but not to them. HR KPIs and measurements and even the engagement data or questions, so outdated. I personally could maybe identify myself or I cared about three or four questions that they asked me. The rest, a hundred questions, I just ticked something. I, did, I couldn't, I don't care. Like... So when you have a high engagement score, which is also questionable, and I'll tell you why, but low employee satisfaction. So the reality doesn't match the score. Always trust reality because it means only that you are measuring the wrong thing. You need to go back, and this is what employees don't do or HR don't do. You need to go back. Okay, my, this is not what I'm hearing from my employees. That's how I operate. I don't care about your data. I look at it. I collect data because it's very, very important. That's the first go-to. But without listening to employees, is there is no point of collecting any kind of data. Literally, you have to do the two together. Now, 
This spoke to hundreds of HR professionals, business leaders, and, and, and employees, and looked at also research data. And here is what we found out, why HR is struggling. Now, let me start with their burnout rate. 95% of HR leaders find working in HR to be overwhelming due to excessive workload and stress. A stugger, this is this year's data. A staggering 84% of HR leaders frequently experience stress and 81% report feeling of, burned out, feeling of burnout. Now, there's so many reasons for this. Number one is incompetence. They don't like to hear it. But let's talk about it because that's one of the keys or crucial element of the workforce is being miserable. Because if you start the, um, looking at HR's competence, for example, education, most of them don't have any qualification. And I'm not glorifying qualification because that's not what it is about, but it is important. And do you know why? Most of the time people attack qualification. Oh, you don't need it. Well, you don't, but it actually shows you who you learned from. Because if you learn from reputable organizations who are experts in, within the field of HR or any field, really, if you, are, if you want to take it further, then we know your knowledge, what you know, what are the, what, how you look at the world of HR. But if you never went and you learn from your previous bosses, we don't know who your previous boss learned from. So we don't actually know what you know. And you're going to have to come and demonstrate to us. And we know that this is the cascading effect in HR because 90% of the HR professionals just literally somebody coming from the street and start doing HR stuff. And that's, that's why the workforce is miserable because we handed them over to incompetent people. And once again, I'm not blaming HR. I was hired or promoted in, within my company to a role that I was not qualified to do. So I went and I done two master's degrees. Now, not everybody can do it and afford it financially or time-wise, but I had to do it. So I understand that if I didn't do, I would be still playing, you know, games, um, with, because at the time I was a facilitator and trainer with the workforce because I didn't know better. I would have not known better. So I understand. So the first reason for burnout is really incompetence. And the second part of this problem is when HR or fine, uh, business leaders bring in organization, uh, consultants into their organizations to help HR, those consultants are not from HR background. They are also incompetent. So now the blind leading the blind, the blind leading the disengaged. That's my book, right? And this is where it came from. So then we give them resources and tools and help that are also incompetent. So what is the point of that? So HR is in a big mess. Partially is there for, for it, but I don't actually blame them. I really don't. Now, let's move on. What are the questions that we have asked or we have asked the workforce and what they have said? HR professionals say that they are done with hollow certifications that make no real impact or hold them against certain standards. So this is how I started the video, talking about that, you know, all these certifications, like best place, happy place, whatever places, yet... Employees are not happy and HR professionals find these certifications really shallow, not helpful, and they are just doing it because this is what they used to. Yesterday, we had a conversation on the WhatsApp group and one of the HR professionals, a senior person, look, I'm doing it. It's not helping me this certification, but at least I know what I get and it's the least effort because I don't have the time and the energy. So these are the people who we ask to better our workforce's experiences when they are run to the ground and they can't be bothered. Literally, they don't have the energy. Some can't be bothered, but many of them, they would like to do the right thing, but they just don't have the energy or they are not allowed to do it. They're not allowed to change. 
So certifications, you know, these shiny badges, everybody loves them. Unfortunately, nobody trusts them. And it's that this is what they also said. Employees have also lost trust in many workplace certifications that promise a great or happy work environment only for them to join and find that reality falls um, far short of that hype. So we know that, right? It just doesn't match. Once again, maybe they had a good score, employee engagement score, which is not true because great place to work, they, they um, reduced, lowered their uh, certification standards to 65%. So if you have 65% score on your employee engagement, you get the certificate is a great place to work, but that's really, really low. But even if you have 80%, but then employees enter the organizations or they are there because, you know, oh, it's a great place to work or whatever badges, and then they find the opposite because these scores don't match. So once again, the score is great. It, it should give you some sort of data um, but always listen to your employees. My biggest problem with surveys, generally speaking, is surveys are measuring what they are designed to measure and tests as well. And maybe, and most of the time, not maybe, this is not the most important thing for employees. Most of the time, these workplace, you're hiring recruitment assessments, they, they test and measure what they are designed to test and measure. But those areas, most of the time, are not the most important for the particular job that that person is going to fulfill or, or fill in. That's why I don't like tests too much, right? Now, that's a good indicator, good for personal development, not for recruitment. But that's just for me, the debate is always up uh, <laughs> out uh, on that or the jury. Next one. One of HR's biggest challenges, so the certifications, they don't help HR. This is what they are saying. They don't get the necessary need, uh, help out of it. The data shows this, reality is that, and they unfortunately know. And also employees no longer trust these kind of, you know, workplace certifications because they enter the organizations on many, many cases and, and, and they just find different experiences. Now, one of HR's biggest challenges is the overwhelming number of engagement surveys that yield little to no actionable insights. So if you go online, the number of surveys, the companies, tech companies flooded the market. Now, I can tell you something. It doesn't matter what survey you use if you don't use the data, if you don't listen to your employees. Because... Everybody's looking for the best, the most, the, 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 you know, the best service. Some company, some HR says, I'll just give me the 12 question of Gallup. You're not going to go far with that. It's a very good baseline, but that's literally Gallup has stopped investing into Clifton strengths and their engagement. And it's very outdated, right? And those questions, those 12 questions were designed maybe 30 years ago with Marcus Buckingham. And I guess things have changed since then. But even if they find solid survey tools with robust data, then they are often left without the guidance to translate insights into meaningful actions that enhance employee experience. And this is what I find. So you either have the poor tool that gives you zero information or that measures the wrong thing that is not important for your work or to your workforce, or you get a really good tools because there are fantastic tools out there that is just so robust. HR don't have the capacity or people don't have the capacity to even read the first page. Yesterday, we sent out eight pages of PDF document with barely any text on it. And senior leaders and HR professionals said, oh, it's too much of a text, put some pictures. How can I trust these people to manage and sort out organizations that are so complex. And I was just looking at, I'm like, oh my Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Like I can't trust you if you can't read eight pages of PDF with barely any text on it, then I can't give you thousands of employees to look after. That is as simple as that, I'm sorry. I don't know who hires these people in senior roles. Um, so, 
complex data is also an issue because then you need experts and you need time and you need people who can actually read more than one page um, to translate, interpret and make sense of that data. And the HR professionals also mentioned related to surveys, instead of expert human advice, they are left with AI solutions that lock the nuance to address the unique needs of their workplace. And this is what you are started to notice. I mean, not now, it's been there for a, for a few years now with AI and tech companies are flooding the market, that they give you tips and tricks. It's all AI generated. Nobody knows what to do with them. Do you think managers, HR leaders, or anybody is looking at those? They want literally somebody, an expert, come in, hold my hand while we are doing this and we do it together. First of all, they don't have the time, they don't have the energy, they don't have the mental capacity because they are up to here. And most of the time, they don't have the expertise. So an AI trip, tips, and guidance and do this and AI generated positive psychology or whatever we bring into it is not going to help with complex matters. It helps with simple matters, but complex matters of, of employees, engagement, motivation, and the workforce is never going to have. It's just too complex. Plus you need to understand what's happening. It's very context dependent. So that's, that doesn't work for them. Then there is the confusion between employee engagement, employee experience, and employee well-being. HR professionals struggle to differentiate and align this concept, and it's really what it does is just creates these fragmented strategies that fail to deliver any kind of result. So your experiences is really so poor at work because of the lack of competence is the lack of focus. Nobody wants to focus on it. The lack of resources HR professionals are getting. Most of the times are, they are stopped by leaders because sometimes they wanna do the writing, but the leaders say, oh no, we don't really need it. And as a result, we get the tools, whatever is the easiest to use, we run some surveys, um, we present it, and that's that. And also senior leaders just don't want to make decisions. You have no idea how many times, and I will never understand it for the love of my life, senior leaders are not happy with their HR. And then I have conversations with them. Okay, these are the options that you can do. You know, we can come in, we can help you with it. You can fire the person, you can hire a new person. There are millions of options. No decision. They, they rather complain and look at their thousands of employees not happy than change that one person and say, look, or just give the right help to that one person. Look lovely, you're not delivering what you need to deliver. We have an unhappy workforce, so we're gonna have to do something. And it's not happening. So the reason why you are, why the workforce experience is so poor, because we are not looking at, we don't have, first of all, we don't have data, valuable data. Second of all, there is no focus, there is no resources, there is no competence, there is no urgency. Many times, today I spoke to a CEO, uh, about, you know, designing their employees' experiences or, what, or that they have really good. So I just wanted to give them this quality stamp that, hey, you are doing fantastically. Make sure that you are recognized and here it, here it is how you can get recognition for it. And they reply that we have different priorities. And I'm like, what would be your different priority if you are a senior HR? That came twice from CHRO. I'm like, that's your job, actually. Like, what are the priorities do you have? Today is from the CEO, lovely man. And once again, they have good um, employees' experiences, generally speaking. So when he's saying, I have different priorities, that I actually understand. You know what? There's no major problem, and I'm the CEO. I'm growing the business. Um, but when it comes from HR, I'm always, I always get very disappointed because, you know, how do you want to um, address the workplace? How do you want 
anybody, you know what you come up with in terms of recruitment strategy, in terms of development. So you remember in the employee experience design, we talk about, and this is not in place. And these are the standards that we put in place with companies that we work with, that you need to measure seven areas of employees life cycle, because then you know where the problems are, but they don't. So no matter, you come up with a great recruitment strategy, you, you even fix your onboarding, right? But then you don't look at the other areas of the organization and lose everybody over there, but we don't have the data. So companies are doing the bare minimum to attract people, they invest lots in there, but then organize, but employees are coming into these workplaces and they see the state and they run through the other door, run out the other door, wasting money. Instead of doing the work, you know how what I see it, this, the lazy LinkedIn quick apply or what was the button that you, you know, in easy apply, that you can apply literally to a hundred thousand job a day but there is no quality there. There's no even match in there. You're just gonna click, oh yeah, that's good. So that's the lazy approach that yields no result. When we want to achieve result, that actually comes with work. You have to do the work. So what we do, we, we measure workplaces at 17, in 17 areas, right? So we collect data from employees in terms of leadership, communication, reward, and benefit, blah, 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 blah. That's the score. That's the over, and that includes also the engagement. So you don't need an engagement score. That there is not, it, there is no such a thing as employee engagement score. <laughs> I already talked about it so many times. Um, and that forms everything. That's the score. Let's say it's 80%. And then we go and look at what are those standards that you have implemented within the seven areas of the employee life cycle? Because when these 17 areas are measured and one of them, let's say communication or leadership or whatever, it's, it's low, you can actually go back to these employee life cycle stages, look at the standards and it Im Im immediately reflect and identifies the gap. Hey, these are the standards that you are not having. You are not even measuring anything in here. So you can't fix it. You are fixing employees' problems, the workplace here. This is just your mirror. This is just your measurement. Don't focus on the score, never. It's like not doing your diet, but always stepping on the scale. What's the point of doing that? You need to do the diet, right? You need to do the exercise, eat healthy, or in this case, fix the organization, put standards in place in terms of HR practices, measure every single, as much as possible you can within each of these areas of the employee's life cycle. So then you identify what are the problems in here. You fix it here, you measure here constantly, and once a year, you step on the scale, just to see, am I there? But the work is here. And everybody is looking at these surveys and not doing anything. It's the same thing that we do with performance management that drives me absolutely bonkers every single year. We confuse performance management with performance measurement. The other way around in this case. So performance measurement is your employee experience or employee engagement score, right? Perform, uh, performance measurement is your annual rating, achieved, exceed, whatever we do. But the, measure, the management of performance or your employees' engagement experience, well-being, whatever you want to call it, is during the year, every single bloody day. <laughs> this is how it is. And when you don't do that, which we don't do that even with performance management, we give some goals, we put them on some training, that's it, halos, like there's no more to it. And then at the end of the year, we come back and we measure you. We don't even have the right to measure performance when we did not manage them, manage the performance throughout the year. You don't have the right to step on that scale if you didn't eat well and exercise throughout the year. It requires hard work, and this is what nobody's doing. 
because I told you why, and we're gonna stop this video here, because it takes time, it takes effort, effort, and it takes not necessarily a lot of money because you can literally do these things with so little investment. All you need is to have that mindset that I need to measure each areas of my employee's journey and go there and fix it instead of, oh, what do I do? Oh yeah, the employee survey score is not great. We have an action plan. None of them is being implemented out of those action plans. Maybe the pizza party on Friday and the monthly birthday stupid celebration. You know how many action plans I have done in my life in the hotel industry? You know how many engagement surveys I have run in my life in the hotel industry? None of them led to anything meaningful or changed anything. So my suggestion, if this is what you do, save that money. Because now you are um, deluding yourself and also giving a false hope. I mean, you're not giving false hope to employees because they are already too skeptical. They already know that nothing is going to change. So you are not even collecting valid data because everybody goes just like, yeah, whatever. Continuous measurement of daily experiences. Measure as much as you can based on those standards. You fix here, and I guarantee you the score is going to move immediately. I hope this helps. That's why you have bad experiences at work.